Hey guys, welcome to the shop. A little shorter video than normal this week. I'll give you what I have time for. It has done nothing but rain the entire week, and we had one of the highest water levels down here in the stream beside the shop that probably a lot of you are familiar with that I've ever seen since I've been here, and my neighbor as well. He's lived here probably 60 years, so that's saying something. It was impressively high. I got some footage of it in the beginning anyway. My bank reinforcement did hold up. I haven't talked much about that, but I'll give you a shot of it anyway. Work on a mortar joint up here that got busted when me and Al jacked up this roof in order to level it, and I finished the rebar in this trench. So, thanks for watching, guys. Let's get started. So, late yesterday afternoon, I got some video clips I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put in. Uh, early in the event, before the water level got to its highest point, it got dark um, before I could show you the full extent of the water level in here. It rained yesterday for probably 15, 20 minutes maybe. Some of the hardest rain I believe I've ever seen. The ground was already wet here and all the water ran down into the stream here. I mean, the water level's low now. This is the next morning, right? It's, the sun's just coming up good. So it's amazing how fast the water level in this can rise and then drop as well. But my neighbor just stopped and talked to me and he said that's the high, he's 80, 78 or 80 years old lived here most of his life and said that was the highest water level in this stream that he could ever remember. You know, me as well, obviously. I've only been here 10 years, 9 years. But I'm thankful to say that my bank reinforcement survived with very little damage. I lost one clamp up front, but that's all right. Uh, I've got it fixed. Hopefully, uh, if it survives the worst that I've ever seen, maybe it'll hold up for a while. Let me show you some of those uh, shots of the water. So I'm just finishing up the rebar in this footer in the back corner. Just the upper run and then I'm done. Now, this has taken quite a bit of rebar, more than I actually expected. And by the time I'm done putting the verts in, I'll be out. And I'll have to pick up all the rebar. Uh, I guess it's going to go in the pad here. Now, obviously I've been trying to do this in as long a runs as possible. Avoid as many uh, joints as I can because it just saves rebar. Um, if you think about it, this number five rebar takes a 26 inch overlap in order to, for it to maintain its strength in the joint. And if you have two bars that butt up against each other, well you're going to have to have a four foot, four inch piece in order just to make you know, that act as one continuous bar. So you want to, obviously, I mean, you want to eliminate as many joints as you can and 
hit stuff with and have to make so many cars. Don't you hate it when you make stupid mistakes? Stuff that's easily avoidable makes you feel like an idiot sometimes. This piece of rebar needed 190 degree bending. Well, I put it in the right location on the bar, but the problem is I bent it to the left instead of the right. So I don't think there's any reason to go overboard when it comes to tying rebar together. As long as it's strong enough to hold itself in place and not move while the concrete's getting poured in, I think that's good enough. This little wire is not going to add anything to the strength of this concrete or this rebar. Its only job is to hold this stuff in place to the concrete cures. And anything more than that, just wasted effort, really. All the rebar work's done, forms have been coated, and hopefully they'll come loose when the time comes to break them free. Trench is cleaned out. Pretty much it's ready, I guess. I'm just waiting on the chance to be able to pour it. I've got some block work that I need to do up here. The repair job where, where me and Al jacked up this roof, right? This whole building had settled. Uh, it had caused a big split in a mortar joint up here that I got to fix. So I've got some mortar. We'll mix some of that up and see if we can't patch this uh, this spot up. I also got to run around and check my forms to make sure that nothing's moved. I'll do that with the laser real quick, then we'll do the block work. This is a self-leveling laser, but it's got to be pretty close, so you got to make sure the tripod is relatively level before you turn it on. But it'll level itself if it's, you know, pretty close. Right now is when I need to make sure that 
everything, all my numbers add up, right? I don't want to do this the day that the truck is showing up. I'm within an eighth of an inch. Let's see, what would that be? Five foot, seven and a half, yeah. I'm within an eighth of an inch, at least on this back side. I'm going to check the front side. Looks pretty good. Good enough. So check out this impressive formed concrete structure. I'm sure it was pumped in stages. You know, they'd pump up to another pump and to another pump and to another pump until they got to the top. You see how the forms were bolted together here. So me and Al had to do quite a bit of work to get the roof of this building back level again due to it settling over six inches low on this front quarter, two inches low on the back. It wasn't that bad. But because we had to go so far with this roof, it actually split this mortar joint here. These walls aren't grouted, grouted solid, at least past those couple blocks there. That wooden header beam we also leveled is lag bolted through, that, uh, through the beam and up through the seal plate. So, I'm going to grout this back solid. It really needs a bed of mortar to set on because it will settle some more and I don't want it to uh, it just be floating in the breeze like it is. So I'm going to grout it full from this side and the other side. It won't be near as noticeable you know, once you get that full, but that has to, something has to be done with that. It just can't stay like that. So check that out. That's how much water we got in one day. That's how much it rained anyway. Uh, enough to fill this wheel, wheelbarrow at least halfway full. Quite a bit of rain. So any cement, mortar, pre-mixed concrete that I buy, I have to put it in plastic bags or else it just gets it's like a solid lump in a week. It's just so humid around here, especially in the summertime. This pre-mixed stuff doesn't last long. Well, any of it doesn't last long. It gets any bit wet.
these vertical joints are pretty tough. What I'm doing is trying to just make sure I get, because it doesn't want to adhere well. I tried to wet it, and that helped some. Man, my nose is itching. Um, but I find just rubbing a thin layer of mortar on it pretty aggressively and then wiping it in seems to help. Still not easy. So doing a little research before I got started messing with this mortar. And something I seen that was a pretty neat little little tip was instead of just picking up your mortar like that, if you flip your trial over, I mean it just falls right off. But if you pick it up and give it just a little snap with your wrist, see how much better that sticks on there? I mean actually use that in this quick little job here. Worth knowing. Makes a difference. So I definitely wouldn't go as far as to say that that looks good. But it looks fine. I mean, I'm okay with that. Hopefully over time, as that, con or as that mortar cures, you know, the color difference will be less obvious. But as far as functioning, it, it, it'll work, right? The joint is packed about as good as I could get it and should be fine. Just don't look at it. You talk about a hard to beat tool for the shop. When it comes to grinding by hand, bench grinder style, high speed steel, touching up carbide and stuff like that, this model grinder is just hard to beat. And in fact, in my mind, it's just the pinnacle of bench grinders uh, for you know, the lathe or the shaper. Now, these name brand are hard to beat. They run just extremely smooth. I mean, it's got a little vibration in it, but almost none. So this is the Half horsepower, single phase, 60 hertz, 115 volt, 3600 RPM model. I know guys that have seen these at good deals and passed them up, and for years uh, they've kicked themselves for not uh, picking them up when they become available. So if you're looking for a grinder for the shop, and these are hard to beat. So probably the most obvious benefit that this thing has over your regular bench grinder is just the size of the work tables are so much bigger. Most bench grinders have a work table about the size of a business card, which is just not enough real estate to, you know, sweep a piece of high-speed steel around and get a good profile on it. These tables also are adjustable, so you can set it at the angle that you want. There's a protractor uh, built in down on the front and the back of this thing. The way that the wheels are designed, you can grind on the front or on the face, or on the face or the front, whatever you want to call it. It also has coolant cups that are removable. It's supposed to have two. This one only has one. You can put a valve on it. A lot of them, I guess, when they're new, come with a valve and a little nozzle so you can put coolant directly on your part, or you could just you know, dunk it like normal. It has these removable pans at the bottom. These are really heavy cast iron, at least to for this model that'll catch the excess coolant or the grinding dust. I've seen a lot of people put a diamond wheel on one side and leave the other side just standard silicone carbide. Use one side for carbide only and then the other side just for high speed steel. You can also change the direction of the rotation of the spindle on this so you're always grinding down against the table depending on you know the way that your tools facing in the grind that you need. Sometimes you may need to grind on one side or the other so you can reverse the spindle on this. That makes it nice. Plus a pretty handy little work light. So definitely much nicer than a regular bench grinder. Much more expensive but much nicer. Man, she's gotten big. Well guys, that's it this week. I was hoping to have concrete in this thing today, actually, but 
due to some scheduling issues and stuff. It just didn't happen, so I'm going to put it off. Maybe next weekend. We'll see. <laughs> I'm getting... I'm getting tired of working on this trench, and I'll be glad to get you know, out of the dirt. Happy to see Pima. Seems to be doing well. Hadn't seen her, or, yeah, hadn't seen her in two weeks. Some had been eating her food, and I was pretty confident that it was her. But without laying eyes on her, you know, couldn't make sure that uh, it was her. It could have been any critter coming in here and eating it. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers. And that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.